is everyone today? Good. So glad to be back with you. I'm Pastor Grenz. Micah, wave. There's Micah. That, that one's mine. Not you. That one's mine. He's my final kid here at CTK. He's a seventh grader. I've had three other kids go through here. It's been wonderful. But I want to lead you in chapel today. We're going to take a look at our school theme verse this year a little bit and, and talk about that. But first, let's do some uh, our opening song. And while we do that, we will uh, collect our offering, okay? So why don't we stand up to sing? Thanks, Pastor Grants, for remembering to stand. All right, guys, this one is brand new. So you're not going to know it that well yet, but it's pretty easy to learn. And as you can read, the words are on the screen, okay?
Please be seated. We make our beginning today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To him belongs eternal praise. Those who practice the fear of the Lord have good understanding. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Have mercy on me, O God. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Create in me a clean heart, O God. O Lord, open my lips. Let's listen to a song. Joshua 1 verse 9 Have I not commanded you Be strong, strong and courageous Have I not commanded you Be strong, strong and courageous Bible verse I want to learn, I always try and put it to music. And that one was fun. I enjoyed it. But that's the verse we want to talk about today, right? Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <clears throat> so, let's talk for a second. Are there ever times you're afraid? Who here is afraid of the dark? Who here is afraid of big, mangy dogs? Who here is afraid of tiny little dogs that nip? Who here is afraid of people that they don't quite know? Sometimes that's scary, right? Who here is afraid of being left somewhere in the grocery store while your mom turns down the next aisle? Okay. So I think we've established that there are things that we can be afraid of in our world, right? Yeah. Yes, there are things that we can be afraid of. And there are, there are lots more that we could put into that list. You bet. If we went through everybody in the room, could somebody come up with something new to be afraid of? That's a little scary in and of itself, isn't it? That we are all afraid of something. Now, the other thing that, that the Bible verse talks about when the angel is talking to Joshua, is do not be discouraged. How many of you don't like it when things don't go your way? Everyone should raise their hands. How many times are you discouraged when you have math homework and you didn't want it? Look at that. Oh my God. Sorry, math teachers. How many, time, how many of you are discouraged when your mom says no cookie when you get home from school? She's making dinner. Oh, we want that cookie and it's discouraging that we don't get it, right? How many times are we discouraged 
by the people around us because they're not acting the way we think they should. Maybe they're being mean, maybe they're being silly, whatever it is, it's not what you want them to do and we get discouraged. How many people do that? How many of you think you're adopted because your parents can't possibly be your parents? They're too weird. <laughs> that's, that's discouraging too, right? That's discouraging too. So have we, have we established also, have we established also that there are lots of things in our world that make us discouraged, that keep us from doing the things we want, from uh, thinking the things we want, saying the things we want, there's all sorts of things that make us discouraged. Now, here's the thing. What is God saying to Joshua as he tells him this? Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified, be terrified afraid, scared. Don't have a fear of anything. And do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Do not be upset when things don't go your way. <coughs> Because in our life, in our life, are there lots of things to be afraid of, and there are lots of things that upset us because they don't go our way. You bet. You bet. And can I share a secret with you? It doesn't change when you get to be an adult and are in charge of your day. There's still things to be afraid of. There's still things that cause you to be dismayed and discouraged. Oh, Pastor Grenz, what a wonderful message for today. Isn't that fantastic? Well, yes. If we don't understand that there is fear and discouragement in our lives, we can't actually understand what God is trying to tell us here. Now, what do you generally do when in the middle of the night you've had a terrible dream, a nightmare, you wake up all scared and terrified, what do you do? You go to your mom or your dad, right? You go to your mom and your dad. Either that or you sit up in your bed and you just scream. Right? My kids did that. They still do that. My kids still do that. It's generally when I'm getting them up for school each day. There's a lot of crying and screaming. <clears throat> but who are you yelling for? It's for somebody that loves you and who cares for you and who will help you with whatever you're dealing with, right? Whose mom has sat up with them while they, after a nightmare and they've, you've uh, laid there and you've fallen back to sleep and then she went back to her bed? Yep. Who has had a dad do that in their life? Yeah, right? We generally want people who will help us, who love us, who care for us, to see us through the times where we are afraid and where we are discouraged. But here's the problem. When my kids come to me and say, Dad, I need help with my math homework, it's really, really hard, I always remind them I don't do math. I have to take off my shoes to do upper level math. And so what happens? They get more discouraged because I can't help them and they think I should be able to. I then point them to their sister who's in like the highest math I could possibly think of. It's disgusting how smart she is. And she generally explains it really, really well. But I can't help them because I just don't remember calculus at all. I don't remember algebra. I do like geometry. But it makes them more discouraged, doesn't it? As much as we want our moms and our dads and the people who love us to take care of us and help us when we're afraid and when we're discouraged, it doesn't always happen, does it? It doesn't always happen. And guess what? My mommy and daddy... Don't live with me. They live in a whole different state. I can't wake up in the middle of the night and scream for my dad and he'll come running. And if I call him in the middle of the night because I've had a nightmare, he does not answer. He turns his phone off. So there's times where we want people to help us with our fears and our discouragements and the things that upset us, and there's not always somebody who can, right? And sometimes people don't even care. Anybody here ever had a problem that you tried to share with a friend and your friend said, I don't care? Not my problem? Yeah. Oh, isn't that terrible? Doesn't it feel horrible? You know who will listen and who will help? God will. 
That's what he promised Joshua. And to a certain extent, he's also promising you and me that when we have something that we need help with, God will help us with it. So can I pray to God and have my math homework just automatically done, the pencil will move by itself, and I don't have to do it? Good answer. No, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. Okay? Can I pray to God that my friend who's not being, the person in my class who's not being very nice and not being friendly to me will just disappear and no longer go to school? No! can't pray for that. God's not going to do that. But can God help us with the problems that are truly scary and the things that actually make us discouraged? You bet. Because you know what? There's nothing more scary than sin and death and the power of the devil. The evil of our world that you and I run into that makes us scared, that discourages us, Guess who's taken care of it? Jesus has. He died on the cross that our sins would be forgiven and the sins of the whole world might be wiped away. Jesus rose from the grave to show that death no longer has power over us. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of anything more scary than dying. And on top of that, Jesus has defeated the powers of the devil, all the evil in our world, and he has control over it. Now, we didn't even talk about those, right? But are those the big problems that you and I face each and every day? Yes. Are those the problems that are there throughout our lives? You bet. Has Jesus taken care of every bit of it? Yes. Now, does that mean that it'll never happen to us and there's no evil that's ever going to happen? No. But do you know what the secret here is? You know why Joshua doesn't need to be terrified or discouraged? Because God is with him, and God is working even in the bad stuff that you and I believe in him more and more. The bad things that happen in our lives, when our friends betray us and talk behind our backs, when we hurt somebody by our words and by our actions, When we are discouraged by the evil that we see in our world where people don't have good lives and we don't like it, Jesus is using all of that so that you and I can believe in him. Who's the only person that can do anything about it? Jesus. So guess what? When you fall and scrape your knee, you should give thanks for your parents that will put Band-Aids on it or your teachers or the ladies in the office, right? Because they love you, they care for you, they want to help you. And will it heal? And is God good in fixing up your knee? You bet. Is God also there when somebody betrays you, when somebody says mean things about you behind your back, to give you the courage to stand up and tell them, stop doing that, to call them to repentance, and then when they say they're sorry and ask for forgiveness, you can give it. It's not an easy conversation, but it is one that we need to have. And who gives us the power and the encouragement to do it? Jesus. Jesus does it because he is always with us. He always is there for you and for me in his forgiveness and in his grace to help see us through all the problems and issues we have every day. So, are the words to Joshua words that are for you and for me? I think so, don't you? We don't have anything to be afraid of. Does that mean we'll never be scared? No. We don't have to have to be discouraged by the things of this world, but will it still happen? Is God at work in all of it, all of it, so that you and I can trust and rely upon him more each and every day? Even in the bad stuff, God is working good. That's the promise that God has through Paul. All things that happen to you are for your good. It's sometimes hard to believe that about the bad things, the things that scare us, the things that discourage us. But the truth of it is, you and I have that, and it's good. This promise is for you and for me, just like it was for Joshua. So will you pray with me? 
Let's thank God for his incredible goodness to us each and every day. Fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be discouraged. Because you, Jesus, have helped us and love us and are with us with your mercy and grace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, a few more prayers here. We pray, Lord, that you would give us mercy and forgive our sins by which we have offended you. Lord, Help us work and play in such a way that all our activities may bring honor to your name. Lord, Watch over the sick, the troubled, the lonely, and let them experience the strength and joy your spirit gives. Bless our school and our teachers and all who serve in this place. Guard our homes and families with your love and make us loving and considerate of one another. All these blessings we are bold to ask because you have given us the greatest gift of all, Jesus. Let's pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We remember that it, is the, that it is God who has given us life, who renews our love for, to us each day. We thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We thank you, Lord. It is, our, it is with our hearts and our hands that we receive the many gifts God has for us. We thank you, Lord. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's stand up for another song.
Have a seat, everybody. I think we've got some announcements.